Hey, I'm Kyle Adams, and today I wanted to talk to you about SVG. If you're a web designer, you may have worked with this format a lot, and you may not know exactly how to export for the best SVGs possible. You can do really cool things with SVGs, including animation. I'm gonna show you a few of the animations I've done recently for a new icon set I recently released called Creative Things 2.0. Creative Things 2.0 comes with some really awesome SVG exports that let you animate these icons and do some really cool things. Uh, it's not just for animation, of course. You can also get some really small file sizes from SVG. They're also infinitely scalable, which means you don't have to worry about managing pixels and all of those kind of things. SVG is just great for a lot of stuff, but there are a few things you should take into consideration when you're exporting your SVGs. So here's a look at one of the files for Creative Things 2.0. This is the outline version of the icons. There's actually three different exports, outlines, fields, and the color versions, which I really like those a lot. But I'm gonna be using this file to show you an example of exporting SVG. And once you have your file set up, as you can see, I have artboards for each of these icons set up, ready to go. That's the size I would like to export the icon as. And again, these are infinitely scalable, but keep in mind that your artboards determine the maximum size of these icons. So when they do scale infinitely, any excess border around the edge of it will create some padding or margin, whatever you would like to refer to that as, around the edge of the icon. So I'm gonna go up here to File, Export, and we're gonna export for screens. Now, this is a feature in some fairly newer versions of Adobe Illustrator. Uh, if you're not using the newer versions of Adobe Illustrator, you can still follow along by doing Export for Web, but Export for Screens is super awesome because you get to see a lot more detail, and I'm gonna go over exactly what you should be looking for in this menu. Now, I'm gonna deselect a lot of these icons. We don't need to export all of them to show this. I'm just going to export one of them, and let's do the gauge icon right here. Now, over here on the right side, you'll see that I've already selected SVG as the format I'm exporting. And you'll notice this box here called suffix. Suffix lets you add something to the end of the file name. So if I exported all of these icons, it would add the same suffix to the end of all of these icons. And that's handy for things like making notes of what platform it's for. Maybe it's for a specific iOS icon or something like that. In this case, these are all outline icons. And I exported three different types of icons for the Creative Things 2.0 set. So I'm gonna add dash O to the end for outline. And then for the prefix, I've already got an older one in here, but I'm just gonna put icon in the prefix. So the ending file name will be icon dash and then whatever the suffix is on each of these formats. What's handy about this export is that you can actually add a suffix to each file format instead of just SVG, super handy. The next thing you wanna do is go to this gear icon up here in the top right. It's almost invisible. If you haven't seen it before, I don't blame you. Go here and you'll see all of the format settings for PNGs, JPEGs, SVGs, PDFs, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna to go to the SVG section. And in the SVG section, there's a few different things you can look at when you're formatting your exports. The first one to look at is styling, and I've set that to internal CSS. Now, internal CSS basically just means it's like a CSS file they include with the uh, with the exported file, uh, which isn't really ideal. I typically turn that to inline style, and inline style just puts all of the styling in with the code. It's gonna reduce your file size, make it a lot better for web, if that's what you're working with. Uh, fonts, typically I don't mess with this that much. I'm not using fonts a lot when I export icons, but if you are exporting something with a font, you can change that to convert outlines or SVG. Typically I would recommend actually 
expanding your any type of font or anything you have in your Illustrator project, just go ahead and expand that to outlines before you export instead of doing it here. It just makes it a lot easier to know what you're going to be working with. Next up on this list, we have images. Typically, there aren't very many images if you're doing illustration or icons. Uh, this is not really a setting I work with that much, to be quite honest with you. And so I typically just leave that on preserve. For object IDs, each piece of an SVG file, so each piece of these icons is considered an object. So what Illustrator will do is name each of those objects. You can either have that set to the layer name that that icon is, is a part of, or you can change it to minimal or unique. Typically I change it to minimal uh, because I like to name each of my objects. If I'm actually going to open this SVG file as like a HTML file and change things about it, I like to name my own objects. And if you're just exporting this as an SVG to use as the image itself on a website or something, you don't necessarily need to have object IDs anyway. So I usually change that to minimal. And then we get to decimal. Uh, this is the most interesting setting, I think, of all of the SVG settings. And if you've seen this before, you may have been a little bit confused. Decimal is essentially how many places after the number. So an SVG file will write all of your paths as numbers. And so each vector point is a coordinate. And when you're saying decimal, you're essentially saying how many places after the decimal point can there be numbers? And what this really translates to is better definition in your SVG files, a nicer, cleaner SVG file, which is great. The only problem is the more decimals you add, the bigger the file will be. So if you don't have a really complicated drawn out object, you may just wanna keep it low two to four, typically don't go past seven or eight. It's a good range to stay in when you're working with SVG files. Also down here we have Minify, which Minify basically just puts all of the HTML on one line. That's going to save you some space. I typically check that. Responsive, also typically check that. That's going to mean that the SVG file is 100% of the width of anything you put it into. So if you put it on a website and you have it in a box that's 300 pixels wide, it will scale to 300 pixels instead of staying the size that it is when you export it from Illustrator. So now that we've got all these settings out of the way, it's a lot to go through, but hopefully that helps you kind of understand a little bit more about the settings you're using when you're exporting SVG and why you're making the decisions you're making. Again, if you are exporting these to use for web, there may be some of these things you want to change. If you're exporting these just to use as a scalable file, uh, maybe you just put them on a web page. You don't actually go into the code and change anything. A few of these settings might change based on your preferences, but the settings I have on screen right now are exactly what I use when I export SVG files, and I found it the best way to do it. Uh, occasionally, decimal will change. That totally depends on what the icon is, how many paths it has, how complicated it is. But overall, this is the settings that I use. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know below in the comments. Also, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.